Daniel here for Tabletop for One. Please join me at the table as I teach a play through Tesseract. Thank you for joining me for this tutorial and solo playthrough of Tesseract by James Fernhaber, and it is published by Smirk and Dagger Games. And they've provided me with this review copy to provide a tutorial solo playthrough video. Now in Tesseract, the Tesseract artifact has been discovered, this alien artifact that has the power to destroy the planet. And we are trying to contain it and stop it from uh, destroying everything. This is a solo or cooperative game. In the solo mode, you will be playing as two characters. And so let's go into setup here. Now, first you're gonna need a containment area, which will be over here on the left, and then the breach area over here on the right, and then the primed area and the Tesseract stand right here. Now you can use this stand here to hold the Tesseract, but I'm gonna not use that uh, to prevent too much of a shadow on the board here. Now, when playing Tesseract, you can choose from uh, four different difficulty levels, and the difficulty levels are based off of the numbers found on the boards here in the middle. And so this is a five, three, and eight. Now the difficulty levels are introductory, standard, challenging, and difficult. And the way they go is one and five are introductory, two and six are standard, and so on. In this case here, we are gonna be playing the two level difficulty as I have set it up here on top of this little lazy Susan here. Now when you're setting up the Tesseract, you're going to be placing the dice and the stacking them in a four by four by four cube. And so you'll set this little holder up right here You'll grab a bunch of the dice. Don't worry about, you know, mixing them up too much. It, 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 the gameplay is uh, quite varied, so it's not gonna matter if you know which dice are where. And so just set them up. I would advise doing one layer at a time, and that'll help uh, make it easy to set up the next layer. All right, and so there you go. And then you'll wanna make sure that it's lined up on the cube that's printed on the board so that the grid lines up appropriately. All right, and so the next thing we wanna do is uh, place a breach marker here on the zero on the breach board. Now, there's this is two-sided here, so depending on the difficulty you choose and which symbols are shown, you may need to use this side because it might have these symbols here, but uh, we only need to show on this side for this particular setup, and so we'll place this here. And then you're gonna separate the research cards by level and color and uh, place them above the board here, like so. And you'll have shuffled these like normal. You also shuffle and draw six of the containment cards and you'll place them randomly face down in, above these different areas here. These will get revealed during play and be able to be used during play. And I'll explain that when we talk about how to contain and how that works. Next, you're gonna give yourself two labs, these lab boards here, and then two action tokens. You can just set those on the three on the actions there. Then you'll shuffle the researcher deck and draw one each for each of the two different labs. And so I have uh, the demolitions expert and the logistics manager, and we'll place these right here. And then you'll deal one of the level two research cards to each of the two players here, just like so. And then each researcher gets one of the four corners that are shown at the top here. And you're gonna gain the die and then roll the die. So on the left here, we'll gain the yellow one and it rolled a five. The right one will gain this one, it rolled a four. You can see it matches up by pips here. So that's a four, that's a one and so on. And it also shows it here, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And then the next thing you have to do is you have to prime the Tesseract with two cubes by taking the other two corner cubes and you're gonna roll these here and then you're gonna add them to the primed area. You just slot them in underneath the appropriate symbol. Now on your turn, you're going to have three actions as well as play as many research cards as you'd like. The research cards have variety of bonuses. You'll see this one here it says to set a prime cube to any value. So you could change one of these, like I could change this five to a one if I wanted to. This other one here is adjust one cube in your lab. Adjust means to uh, add one to the value or subtract one. So I could change this four to a five or a three. And there's other cards. We'll see them as we encounter them. They're really straightforward on what they do. But the level two cards are about half the power of the level three cards. The level three cards are about half the power of level four cards. So keep that in mind. And so the actions you can take with your three actions, the first one is uh, to remove. And they're, all your actions are shown here at the top of your player board. Now remove is to take a cube from the Tesseract and add it into your lab. Now, when you take a cube this way, you keep the value that it's at. So if I took this yellow one here, I would keep it as a four. 
Now, when you remove a cube from the tesseract, it must be accessible. Accessible means that three sides of it are showing. So right now, all these cubes on the outline here, as well as the cubes on the next level here in the four corners, have three sides showing. So we have the top side, the side side here, and the bottom side here. So those are all showing, and so you would be able to remove one of those and add it to your board. The next action you could do is adjust a die, which means to increase the value by one or decrease it by one, and that's either in your lab or in the primed area. And so when you adjust in the primed area, you uh, move it down or move it up, I guess you could if you really wanted to. But uh, so in this case here, if I adjusted this one by one, I would move it down to a three, like so. Any time that you adjust a prime die uh, from one to zero, you destroy it, and so you remove it from the board. The next thing you can do is contain. Containing requires that you have a set or a run of three or more cubes in your lab. And so the, the way that works is a set is, you know, three of the same kind, or same value. And so we have three fives here, so I could contain one of these, adding it to the containment area, like so. The other way you can contain with a set is by having three of the different colors. So it's either three of the same color or three of the different color. And same thing goes for a run. So if I had a six, five, and a four here, that would be a run and I could contain one of these numbers here. I, I could choose which one I want. If these were all different colors, that would work as well. But you can't have a set that has two of the same color and two other different colors. That won't work. The set can be more than three, so keep that in mind. That, that can be useful sometimes. And after you've contained, let's say I chose to contain this five right here, then what I could do is I could choose, if I want to, roll the remaining cubes of that set. So these two were part of that set, I could re-roll these. And the reason why you would want to do that is that you would gain a research card based on the how many dice you rolled. So you'll get a level two if you rolled two dice, level three if you rolled three, and so on. Now any time that you contain a cube into the containment area, you'll destroy any matching cubes in the primed area. It must be matching value and color, so keep that in mind, but it's a very useful tool to get rid of cubes in the primed area because the primed area is where you're gonna be losing the game because if you get too many breaches, which I'll explain breaches in just a moment, but uh, yeah, if you get too many breaches, you'll lose the game. Now the moment in the primed area, if you've contained two of the same kind of number in the same column, so let's say I contained a purple and an orange four, then I would be able to reveal the card, the containment card for that, that spot. You'll see there's two, four, six down here and one, three, five up here. And once you've completed an entire column, you'll have access to that card and you'll be able to use that card's ability in a future turn if you'd like. So th there are different abilities. I will show you those as we play. I don't want to spoil those ahead of time, but the, there are a lot of bonuses. Bonuses like getting rid of primed cubes, adjusting primed cubes, uh, taking uh, destroyed cubes and reusing them, stuff like that. So there's a lot of really good bonuses that you want to gain. Now, anytime you complete a row, you'll actually be able to take a destroyed cube and add it back onto the Tesseract. So that is a really nice bonus as well. All right, so we're moving on to the rest of the actions here. And the, the next action you can do is transfer. And so tr when you transfer, you spend one action point to either move a cube from your lab to another lab or to take a cube from another lab into your lab. And the next action you have is to study. Study is where you discard a research card and you gain the next level up of that research card. So you can research a two into a three and a three into a four. And the last thing you can do is a unique ability. And the unique ability is, are found on your cards here. And so it shows you with an action at the bottom. Now on the demolitionist here, he has the ability to destroy a primed cube that matches an identical cube in your lab. So that's really nice. And the other character, logistics one, has the ability to transfer two cubes between any player's labs. So that's really helpful. I did fail to mention there's some uh, passive abilities on these researchers as well. So let's go over these real quick. The smooth operation, whenever you contain a cube, you may adjust it as it is placed in the containment. So again, that means plus or minus one to that value, but it allows you some uh, flexibility there. And this one here is whenever you adjust a, a cube in your lab, you may adjust a primed cube as well. So that's really useful. You so demolition expert, he wants to do some adjusting a lot. Again, when you adjust prime cubes past one into zero, they get destroyed. So that helps you mitigate some uh, breaches there. And so those are the six types of actions that you can do. You, again, you only get three per turn, 
research cards don't count as an action. And also, you can use the same action multiple times in your turn. So you could remove three times if you want. You could contain multiple times if you have that capability. And then when once you're done with your action phase, you move on to the threat phase. Now the threat phase has you removing cubes from the Tesseract and priming them. And so when you remove a cube from the Tesseract for a prime, it's always the cube that's lowest in height and lowest in value. So right now you can see there is a one blue here and a one purple there and a two purple here and a two purple there. Those are the lowest on height right now because they're in the second level from the top, but the lowest on value are the two ones. And so you get to choose between those two, take one off, roll it and add it to the primed area. Now, anytime when adding a cube to the primed area and it adds a third cube of that value, then you cause a breach and you'll move the breach token up one space. So keep that in mind. Just as an added side note, if you adjust a die and when you adjust it, it causes there to be a three or more in that area, that won't cause a breach. It's only when it's being added by an effect on the Tesseract or by priming a cube. So keep that in mind. Also, anytime that you reveal one of the base plate abilities, these abilities here that are shown on the bottom of the plate, whether it's revealed during your turn, as in you had removed a cube and added it to your lab and it was the last cube in that stack, or if it was primed, it would cause the ability to trigger. So those will immediately happen. And so this one here says accelerate, destroy the lowest cube on the Tesseract. This one is fortify, reroll the lowest primed cube, this one is tra Chain Reaction, prime the lowest cube on the Tesseract. And Fission, prime the lowest cube on the Tesseract and one random destroyed cube. So you take a random destroyed cube, re-roll it, and add it to the primed area. So that's not good. All right, and with that, we are ready to start the game. All right, so I think I'll start my game with the Logistics Manager, and we're going to remove. So it'll cost one action. And I'm going to remove this four blue and add it to my lab here. And then I will do another remove and remove this six orange adding it to my lab as well. Now, I, I definitely have trouble with picking up these dice just because my hands are huge and I shake. So I have this thing called a handy vac. It's a little suction cup thing. You just squeeze it like so, place it over the die, and you pick it up. <laughs> so it's a really useful. Um, if you want, I'll have a link in my description. I'm not, it's not an affiliate link or anything, but just in case you want something like that, it's useful for games with a lot of tiles as well. All right, so I have one action left and I could contain these right now if I want to, but perhaps I will gain this three orange here instead. And the reason why I'm doing that is I have a four, five, six, right? Let's see, we'll rearrange this here. You can rearrange these if you want, just to make it easier for you to see. So I have a four, five, six in, in all different colors, right? If I get this three orange and then contain using these three here and get rid of the six orange, then I'll have the three orange and it'll be three, four, five in three different colors that could contain again. So that's kind of a nice option. So I'll add this three here and that will end the turn for the logistics manager. Now I could play this card if I wanted to, adjusting a prime cube to any value. That's not a bad idea, you know, just to uh, get ahead of this thing. Maybe I'll just adjust this one or set a prime, it's set. So I get to set it to any value. I'll set it to a one. That way it gets out of the way sooner than later, especially if he adjusts. Because again, whenever you, he adjusts a cube in his lab, he'll be able to adjust one in the primed area so I can knock that one off. All right, so now we go on to the threat phase where one of the cubes gets removed. We look at the lowest level first. And so the second level there is the lowest. And right now it's one of these two corners are the lowest value. So I choose which one. And I think I'll choose the blue one. And so then you roll the die and you'll add it to the primed area here. And we go on to the demolitions turn. So let's see what we want to do. I'm half tempted to grab this yellow cube here. If I grab this yellow cube, right? Adding in here and then I, that'll cost me an action. Then I can use detonate. And detonate lets me destroy a prime cube of, of the identical, right? So it's identical here. So that one gets destroyed. That's nice. But I still need some more here for him. And I think I will remove this one here. And then on top of that, I'm going to use minor ripple. This one says adjust one cube in my lab. And so I will adjust it to a four. So now I have a set of three cubes that are the same value and different colors. And on top of that, since I adjusted a cube in my lab, I get to adjust this one and it becomes a zero and it gets destroyed. So that was really nice. 
All right, so now we are on to the threat turn. And so I have to remove this three because it's the lowest of the of the lowest. It's the, it's the lowest level and lowest value. So this one gets removed and rolled and added here. Now we're back to the logistics manager here. And so I think I'll go with my plan. My plan was to contain these two oranges. I'll start by containing using these three here. This is a run of three. And so it'll cost me an action and I will contain this one, adding it here. And then I will contain again, see now I have a three, four, five, all different colors, and I will contain this one right here. Now for my last action, what do I want to do? I should probably consider getting more cubes. There's a lot of ones here that, that'll be nice to have later. So I will gain this orange one here. Actually, you know what? I, I think I'm gonna gain this purple one here because the, otherwise this one will get taken before I get to my next turn. So I'll gain this one here. And that was my final action on that turn. And now we have to draw a cube for threat. And so this one's the last one on this column here. And so it triggers this ability here. First, we'll roll this die. It's a five. And this one here says to prime the lowest cube on the Tesseract. Well, the lowest cube here is this four in this corner. And so this one will get primed and it's a, it, it rolls a four. And so now we got a lot more cubes here. We have to be careful with this. I think what I'll do is do a transfer action. So I will steal this one from my partner here, bringing it over. That costs one action. And then I will contain, and I'm gonna contain this blue one here, adding it right here. And then I'm not gonna re-roll anything for a bonus card because I'm gonna contain again. Because look, I still have three of uh, three different colors. And so this will cost my final action which I will contain this yellow one. And the reason why I'm containing the yellow one is because there's a yellow one here and that's primed. And since it matches, it gets destroyed. So that's real nice. On top of that, we have two in the same column here in the containment. And so that lets us reveal this card to see what it's gonna be. And so this card is isolation field, take two prime cubes and place them in your lab. Now I don't have access to this card yet. I have to finish the column here to gain access to that card. And then I will be able to use it on a future turn during the action phase. But now I don't know that I need these fours at this moment. So I think I will re-roll these fours. So let's see what we get. Uh, we get some threes there. That's really nice. And in fact, I'll be able to destroy this cube next turn or next demolition turn because it matches. So maybe I should just leave that cube there and let it destroy it. All right, so now we have the threat and we have to remove the lowest cube here. So this one gets removed and it causes a chain reaction again. First, we roll this one, it's a one. And the chain reaction removes the lowest cube, which it is this one blue here. It's the lowest on, on height and value. Rerolling it here and it's a two. Uh-oh, we got two in the two, so we have to be careful there. With that in mind, I think what I'll do is I'll take this two, I totally knocked over the dice, so I don't remember the numbers there. That is the prime reason why I use this handy vac, and I should have used it there. Um, so, I, you know, the rules actually say, you know, if you knock them over, don't worry about the values too much. They usually don't change the gameplay. So I don't even remember what those numbers were, but I wanted this too. So we're gonna add it to my lab here. That costs one action. And then I'll take this three here, and this one is gonna be nice because now I have a, a set or a run of one, two, three, all different colors. And I wanna go ahead and contain at this point. I've spent two actions, I can contain once. And so now I will contain this one right here. And since I'm containing that one, I get to destroy this one because it matches. So that's really nice. And then I, I think I will re-roll these. I, I think it's good. Let's just see what I get. A three and a six and I gain a card. I did forget to give my Demolitionist a card earlier, so that's his card and this one's mine. And again, these are level two cards. They're, they're okay, they're not the greatest thing in the world, so we may wanna research these later. But now this turn is over, we have to remove the lowest cube. And you can see here, we have the three and the four are the lowest ones here, so the three gets removed because it's lowest in value. And so rolling it here, and it ends up being a three. Uh-oh, getting close to the breach here. But I'm not in danger because I can do demo, detonate, right? Destroy one of them because they match. And I can also possibly create a set. Is there a three on there that's gonna work? Not right now, but I could take a two purple. So this is really gonna work in my favor. So first action is I'm gonna take this two purple, all right? So that's my first action, adding it here. And then I will use minor ripple which it lets me adjust the die in my lab. I'll adjust this to a three. Again, adding one or subtracting one. And since I adjusted a die using the demolition's passive ability, 
I get to adjust this one and, and destroy it. And so that's nice. And so I only done one action, but I did a whole bunch of stuff like that. That was great. But now I get to decide, do I want to detonate? And I think I will. I will detonate this one here because it matches an identical die there. And so that's gone. And I could contain the blue three. I might as well, right? Adding the blue three over here, destroying this cube here. So <laughs> Demolition Expert, man, he's really good. I've never played with him before. So that, that was really nice. So he's done with his actions. He has nothing else he can do. Now, do I want to re-roll these during that contain action to get another card? I think I will because I don't really need the three orange at the moment. So let's re-roll. And I get a two and a four. And then I gain a level two card here. Energy Inversion. This is one of the best level two cards there is. So this one here, invert one primed cube and one cube in your lab. That is so helpful. Invert is to flip it over. So a five becomes a two or a six becomes a one. And so th this is so useful. All right, so now it's the threat turn and we have to remove this last one here, which is gonna add an acceleration event. First, we'll roll this. It's a five, uh-oh. And then destroy the lowest cube on the Tesseract. So lowest cube, looks like it's these two fours here. So we can choose which one. I guess we'll destroy this one here, this yellow one, and it's gone. Again, it's accelerating the detonation of the Tesseract here. It's getting closer and closer. And we, we have a long way to go to contain all those cubes. But now it's the logistics turn. And let's see, what do we wanna do? I have a six, a five. I could adjust this one to a four, or I could just transfer this one over. I wonder if I should transfer both of these over because I have that ability, inspire, transfer two cubes between any player's labs. Or maybe I should transfer this one and then transfer this one. And so that costs one action because that was the unique action. Now I have a four, five, and six here, so that's nice. I think I will also research. So I will discard this card and then add a level three card. And so let's see what we've got. Push the limits. Push the limits is take one extra action this turn. Ooh, that actually might be useful. I, I think I'm gonna use this right away. So I'm gonna gain an extra action this turn. So we'll just move this back up to three now. And then I'm gonna gain, let's say I'm gonna remove two cubes. Cause I wanna get to that five right there. That blue five, I think is gonna be useful. And so we'll take this two purple because I have to take the two purple first because the five wasn't accessible, didn't have three sides available. And we'll take the blue five. The five is the hardest to pick up with this thing. So that costs two actions. Now I can contain, and I think I will. I mean, use the orange, blue, and purple here, the six, five, four, and contain the five. Now we got four of the six blues done. But on top of containing that, I did get to destroy this one here. So that was really nice. And then do I want to re-roll these two? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm tempted to do that. I wouldn't mind getting another card. So it's a one and a five. That's not too bad. And then I'll gain a card here and it's research team. Swap labs with another researcher or choose another researcher to draw a level three card. So that's nice. All right, so now our actions are done. We move on to the threat, pulling this one here and it's causing another chain reaction. So we roll this one first and then we are gonna prime the lowest cube on the Tesseract which there's a four blue here, six blue and a one purple. This one gets rolled. Well, the, that six blue wasn't accessible anyways. Uh, and here we go, another four, that's not good. All right, so what I wanna do is I want to take a cube. I'm gonna take this yellow one, adding it here. So now I have a one, two, three of different colors. And then I'm gonna take this level two die, this orange level two. So that's two actions. And then I'm gonna use energy inversion invert one prime cube and one cube in my lab. So I'm gonna invert this orange one into a five. And then this one here is gonna get inverted into a three. And so now I'm gonna contain this purple three. And so this purple three is gonna go right here. It destroys this three, this prime three here. And then do I want to re-roll these? I don't think I do. I think I wanna leave them, but I did forget to reveal the, the level three card here. Let's see, atomic shift, make five adjustments in the primed area. That's gonna be useful later. Yeah, so I'm not gonna re-roll any dice. That ends my turn, but we do have to uh, do the threat phase and remove this die. That's gonna cause another chain reaction, which causes another die to be removed, and it'll be this four blue. So this four blue gets rolled and it's another four. And as you can see, the dice are starting to pile up here, so I have to be careful. Now it's the logistics turn, and I think I'm gonna use Inspire again, transferring two cubes. And so I will transfer this five orange over and then this two purple over here. So that was one action. And then I'm gonna take a die. 
I'm gonna take this four purple one here, or this five purple one, sorry. And that was another action. And then I'm gonna contain using that, that five purple, so one, two, three of different colors here, will contain that five, and it destroys this one here. Now I don't think I'm gonna reroll anything right now. I think I'll leave these for now. But this did reveal this containment card. And so this one lets you contain a primed cube. That one's really nice. So we'll, we'll definitely wanna get that one. All right, so do I want to uh, use this card? This lets my other researcher gain a level three research card. And I, th I think I will. So I'll play this one. And so the demolitionist gets this card here. Antimatter bond, destroy one cube in your lab to destroy all identical prime cubes. Now that's not bad, but I probably end up researching this out to a level four later. All right, so now it's the threat phase. We gotta remove this cube here. It's the lowest of lowest and roll it. And it's a five, but also it revealed that event there, fission, prime the lowest cube on the Tesseract and one random destroy cube. All right, so we have these two cubes here, this blue six and the purple six. And I don't think it matters which one I choose, so we'll prime that one. And then taking a random die here, rolling it, priming it. All right, there we go. Lots of dice here. We have to be really careful now. But I have some good opportunities here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to use the adjust action. I will adjust this die into a three purple. And so now what that does is let me adjust one of these out and I'll adjust this one. So that one's gone. And then on top of that, I can actually do a containment. So I'll contain the two orange. And so the two orange will go here and it'll destroy this two orange here. So that's nice. And I might as well re-roll these for an extra card. So <laughs> a one and a two, <laughs> that works out and then I'll gain a level two card. But on top of that, I am going to actually do a research action, researching this level three card into a level four card. And so here's a level four card. And this one says, destroy one prime cube, set one cube in your lab to any value. That's pretty awesome. I don't know, maybe I should use that right now. I'll, I'll, I'll save it for later. This other card here is really interesting. This one's kind of nice. This one is collaboration. It says draw three unused character cards immediately and play this card to use one of their abilities. So I need to draw three character cards. So draw three here. And let's see what we have. We have the uh, Exogeologist. Its action is return a cube from your lab to the Tesseract to take two cubes from the Tesseract. That's nice. This one is a transport engineer. Take two cubes the same color from the Tesseract and place them in your lab. That might be useful too. And then this last one here is if you have two cubes in your lab of the same color that sum seven, transfer one and contain the other. I kind of like that idea. So I'm gonna grab that one and I just place it under this card and I'll be able to use that ability later when I use this card. All right, so now we go on to the threat and we have to remove this cube here. Now it's gonna reveal an event, but we'll roll it first, it's a two. And fortify, reroll the lowest prime cube. Well, that one's the lowest prime cube, so we re-roll it and it's a two again, <laughs> so that works. All right, moving on to the logistics manager's turn. And I definitely want to finish off these fives. I think that's gonna be helpful here. And so the way I'm gonna accomplish that is I'm gonna take this one here and that'll cost an action. And then it'll be, uh, then I'm gonna adjust it. So that'll be another action. So I'll make this into a five. There we go. And then I will prime with the orange. So we have a, f a purple, yellow, and orange five here. And I'll prime, or sorry, contain with the orange. I'm using the wrong terms there. But there we go. So now we have the third one. And the next turn, I will be able to contain this yellow one. So I'm not gonna re-roll these. It's too bad I couldn't contain the yellow this turn because uh, that would have destroyed this cube, but that's okay. I, I think we'll be okay for one turn. We haven't had any breaches yet, so we can allow a few to happen. And so now we have the threat turn and we have to take this die off here, re-rolling it. It's a six and we move on to the demolition expert. Now for the demolition expert, I think I will take this three blue, and then I will take this two orange, and then I'm gonna use mass exchange. So I'm gonna destroy one primed cube, and I think I'll destroy one of these sixes, because sixes are hard to get rid of. And then I could set one of my cubes to a, a value, and I think I will change this one to a four orange, because I plan on containing. Because right now, if I contain right now, I can contain this one yellow. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'll contain the one yellow right here and I'm not gonna re-roll. So that'll be the total of my turn. Now, of course, we have the threat turn, drawing this one here, and that was a four. Oh no! So that causes a breach. Now that we've had three in one column here on the primed area, that'll cause a breach. And on top of that, we do have an event here. We have the accelerate. So destroy the lowest cube on the Tesseract, which is this one here. We're running out of cubes, <laughs> but we got quite a few on the containment area. So I think we have a good shot. 
All right, logistics manager's turn. First thing he's gonna do is contain. So he's gonna contain this yellow five. This is gonna be really good. So first he contains it, then he destroys this. So that's really nice. And then I can reroll these here, which I will do. We got a five and a one. And then on top of that, now I have access to this one here. This one is contain one prime cube. And that is really tempting. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna save it for when a, a moment that I really want it. There's not, that, not a lot of stuff that I can do right now with that it's because you know, these two, I, I already have those on the containment board. I could contain this uh, three yellow, but you know, that would give me access to the other. Maybe that's worth it. Okay, <laughs> never mind. So I will use this one up, contain this three yellow, and that'll cause me to gain access then to the atomic shift here. And so the atomic shift lets me make five adjustments in the prime area. And so I can adjust these dice here and get them split up. So if I adjust this four out of existence, it'll cost four adjustments. So let's do that. That's four. And then we'll just one of these into a three blue here. So that wasn't too bad of a first action of the turn. I did forget to draw a level two card, which might be useful. But I think at this point, the, the other two things I'm gonna do on this turn is remove cubes and I'm gonna re remove these two here because that'll make it useful for me later. All right, so now we have the threat phase and we have to remove this one. It's a five. And then we cause a fission, prime the lowest cube on the Tesseract. So now the lowest cubes are the top layer. So it'll be that one and that one's gonna get primed. So there we go. And then we have to prime a random a cube from the destroyed area and it's a two yellow. All right, so now it's the demolitionist's turn. And one thing I can do right now is I can detonate. So I can destroy a prime cube that matches an identical cube on my lab. So I'm gonna do that, detonate this blue three, because I'm not gonna be able to contain another blue three. So that just gets rid of it. And then I'm going to contain, I will contain this two purple, adding it right here, and I'm not gonna re-roll. Now what I'm doing here is I'm setting myself up for this card. <laughs> so I get to use this card. It says, if you have two cubes in your lab of the same color that summed to seven, transfer one and contain the other. So I get to contain one of these and I can only contain this orange four. So that's a free containment and I get to transfer the other. So the other one goes over here. And of course that was a free action because it was just a card. And so I have one action remaining and I might as well just be on the safe side, adjust this to a one. Now we just have one in each area. So that ends that turn. Of course, now we have the threat. We have to remove this one here and prime it and it's a four. All right, now moving on to the logistics turn. Well, logistics has some things going for him. I think he's gonna contain a couple times because we can contain a purple one and an orange one. So let's do that. So we'll do one containment first. It'll be the orange one since I have multiples of those. Again, my set of course is the three different colors of one value cubes here. And so I had a purple, orange and yellow for that particular containment. But now that completes an entire row. So that's really nice because now I can add one cube from the destroyed area back to the Tesseract. And so I'm gonna add this one here to the top because I'm gonna need this one. So this next action I'm gonna do is I'm gonna contain again. I'll contain this purple one. And I'm still not gonna re-roll these because then I'm gonna take, using my final action here, take this blue and adding it to my lab. All right, now the threat phase and we gotta remove this one here. Of course, it's gonna cause another event. So we got three added here and then destroy the lowest cube on the Tesseract. And that's gonna be this two or this two here. And I don't think it really matters. So we'll, we'll do this one here and it's a one. <laughs> We're getting really, uh, really close here. Now for the demolitionist, I think I'm gonna grab the six yellow and then one of these six oranges. So that costs two actions. And I think I'll stop there and do the destroy or the detonate. I'll destroy this one because it matches one in my lab. I think that's the right call. All right, and so the threat phase, and we have to remove this one here, and that one's gonna get primed, and it's a one, and it causes another breach. That's not good. I did forget to reveal this one containment card here, because uh, I'm gonna have access to the, this turn if I want. This one says, return two prime cubes to the Tesseract. Oh, I think I will like that one. So with the logistics first turn, we're gonna prime this one blue, right here. And so that completes the, the ones column. So I'll have access to that card. And on top of that, it destroys this blue one here. And then I can reroll these two, which I will. And it's a three and a four. It's not too bad. And on top of that, I will gain a level two card. And then do I want to use this right now? Return two prime cubes to the Tesseract. I think that might be a good idea. And so I will return a one and a three. Because neither of these, we, we've already contained these numbers, so I think it's best to return those. 
and I'll place them right here. Now, of course, that cost me one action, so I still have some more time here. I think I'll use the transfer action to send this die over to the demolition expert. And then I will use my final action to remove this number two yellow die because I, I think I'm going to need that because I need to add it there. And I think I have my best shot with this guy to take care of that one. All right, so now we got the threat. We got to remove this cube here, rolling it. It's a six, that's not bad. And move it on to the demolition expert. And so the first thing that the demolition expert is going to do is adjust this die. It costs one action and uh, it's going to be a six. Now, since I adjusted a die here, I get to adjust one here. We'll adjust this one out of existence. And then we'll add this one. We'll remove this blue six, adding it to the board here, costing one more action. And then we might as well contain that blue. Or maybe we should contain the purple, actually. Let's do the purple because that way it destroys this cube. So we'll contain the purple, destroying this cube, and we're not going to reroll anything because I want to use these later. All right, so that's done for the demolitions. Now we go into the threat, and it's either of these two here. I don't need either of these two, and they're about the same, so I'll just take this one here. We're going to prime it. It's a two. That's not too bad. Now it did cause a, an accelerate to destroy the lowest cube on the Tesseract, so it destroys that one. We are so close, all right? So we got 11 cubes left here. We got to finish this. So the first thing I want to do is realignment. I can re relocate up to two cubes on the Tesseract. And the reason why I want to do this is I want to re relocate this one, if I can grab it here, and move it over here. Because I want access to that three. And so I'll take the three as my first action on the logistics turn. And then I'm going to contain this two yellow. Yeah, we'll, we'll contain the two yellow. It doesn't cause me to destroy any cubes, but I think that was worth it. Now, it actually gives me access to this card here, which I haven't even looked at yet. And it says each researcher takes a destroyed cube, re-rolls it, and places it in their lab. Ooh, that can be useful. Let's just go ahead and do that. So for this one here, I, I definitely want, well, I, I guess it doesn't matter which color. So let's go with a yellow. We'll roll a yellow here. So four, okay. So that didn't really help me much. But over here, let's roll a purple and see what we get. And it's a four here. I still have one action remaining here. And I think the best thing for me to do is to research this card. Well, I don't know. Maybe I, sh I should just ad adjust this die down by one. No, I, I think I'm doing good on breaches. I've only had two. So let's let's research this card. Yeah, let's do that. Let's see if we get something good. Implode. Destroy one prime cube. That one, that could be useful. All right, so now we're going to the threat phase. This one gets removed. And, uh, you know, it's just going to keep causing chain reactions here. So it gets primed. That's going to cause a breach, unfortunately. Then we have the chain reaction. Prime the lowest cube on the Tesseract, and it's going to be this one here. And let's see, that's a two. That causes another breach. Ooh, this is not good. All right, so what I'm going to do with the demolitions expert is I'm going to gain a cube here, a yellow. I'm going to do a containment. I have a blue, yellow, and orange of a six here, so I will contain the yellow right here. That's going to let me put one destroyed cube back up onto the, the Tesseract here, and I guess we'll place this one right here. And then on top of that, I, I will contain again. So it'll be my, my final action and I will contain the blue. And so that completes that as well. So we get to add one more and we'll add this five right here. Of course, that gives me access to this card here as well. And it says each researcher may set a cube in their lab to any value. Well, that's gonna be useful in my next turn. So we'll plan on using that. Now let's hope I didn't hedge my bets too much here because uh, we have the breaches that are really, really getting close to the end here. But now we have to prime and we have to prime this cube here. And it's a three. Nice, nice. No breach there. So now we move on to the logistics turn. And I think this is going to win the game. So the first thing I'm going to do is transfer this cube over here, like so. That's a four. And then I will adjust this one into a two. And then I will contain this four right here. Yes, yes. So we destroy this cube. We win the game. We contain the Tesseract. That was the end of it. And so there you go, that was the tutorial and solo playthrough of Tesseract on the standard difficulty. Tesseract is designed by James Fernhaber and published by Smirk and Dagger Games. And yeah, this is a fun uh, dice manipulation kind of game, a, kind of a crisis management kind of game. And as a reminder, this is a review copy provided by Smirk and Dagger. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comments below or point out any rules errors I may have made. Please also like and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here. And I thank you very much for joining me on Tabletop for One. Have a great night.